Here in the UK, we use a lot of electricity, but it might surprise you where some of it comes from. There is quite a lot of pushback from people who don't want huge windmills built close to their houses, and quite rightly so. They are noisy, ugly, they kill birds by the thousands, and not very effective on days with no wind. And when it's too windy, they have to turn them off so they don't rip themselves apart. Another lesser known fact is that the so-called carbon footprint to make these huge machines is massive. And it's even bigger when they are decommissioned. They last on average about 20 years. They can't burn them because it's too toxic, so they have now resorted to burying them in landfills because it costs too much to break them down. That's not very green, is it? According to our favorite source of information, the UK's first grid tower was erected in 1928. Its purpose was to transport electricity to the outer reaches of the mainland, supplying its ever-growing population with the power it needed for expansion into the Industrial Revolution. Before the expansion of the national grid, Businesses used local coal or gas-fired generators and all manner of contraptions to power their factories. So the emergence of electricity delivered to your doorstep, so to speak, was hugely popular. We have been led to believe that these high-tension power lines transport electricity from one place to another. This is true, but the thousands of miles of cable have another lesser-known purpose, and that purpose could change the way you think about power generation. And it also begs the question, why the hell are they keeping this information from us? The word air is derived from the Latin word air, or ether. The ether is the air that we breathe, but apart from keeping us all alive, it has another little known property that you probably didn't realize. The ether is electric. Our whole existence depends on electricity, but that topic is for another video. The ether carries a charge. From the ground upwards, it increases by 100 volts for every meter in height. That is cumulative if grounded. This energy can be harvested from the air, ether, by hanging very long wires high up on pylons stretching right across the country. Have you ever wondered why these thousands of miles of cables are supported on huge, mega expensive and very ugly pylons? when it would have been much easier and much, much cheaper to run these cables under the ground? Or how about under the existing roads? Nope, we apparently prefer seeing these massive monstrosities winding their way across the otherwise beautiful landscape. And I don't know about you guys, but I've never in my 50 years of driving all over the country ever seen a new line of pylons being erected. All services are now buried under the extensive network of roads. A quick search for your local area on Google Earth will show you power lines and pylons. If you try following some of the lines, you will find that some of them start and finish at the same substation. So they're transporting electricity back to where it came from. I think not. No. This network of high tension lines is generating or harvesting electricity from the ether. So apart from the infrastructure itself, it's abundant, it's absolutely free, it's absolutely renewable, absolutely sustainable, and as green as you could possibly get. All you have to do is run miles and miles of cable up in the air, out into the countryside and back again. However, there is a catch. As your town or city expands its suburbs, they will inevitably encroach on the existing power lines. There are many, many stories and examples of construction companies having to build around and underneath these pylons. Doesn't it seem strange to you that rather than bury these cables under the new building project, they just leave them there? Now you have your answer. They can't. As the great cities expanded, the network was not enough to sustain the increased population and other methods such as hydro, nuclear, coal, gas and now wind are used to make up the shortfall. They can't take the cables down because they still generate a large portion of the UK's and most other countries' energy needs. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I present to you the national grid, not only transporting power to the masses, but also generating it through the ether. And it's been doing it for a very, very long time. For free, but you're still paying for it. In the next video on this subject, we will discuss how long this practice has been going on and also some of the fabulous ways our ancestors harvested this energy for their own houses. Space Busters, the channel that makes you think for yourselves.